While experimenting with 3D printing to make camping gear, I've actually made quite a few really useful things. I made a 15 inch buck saw, a hobo fishing reel, and even a modular slingbow. So I've made all this gear and it got me thinking, what about the backpack itself? Could I theoretically make a 3D printed backpack? And as it turns out, yeah, you totally can. The hard part, how to make the pack flexible like a normal backpack. As I was hunting around on Thingiverse looking for things to print, the solution came to be 3D printed chain mail. Hundreds of 3D printed pieces connected together to form flexible plates. The one I settled on is called Flex Mesh. Link in the description if you want to print your own. And this would serve as the basis for my pack. Many, many hours of 3D printing and assembling later, I came up with this pack. A roughly 25 centimeter by 13 centimeter by 35 centimeter pack, accounting for the wall thickness, it's about 10 liters of capacity. Not very big, but I can't underscore how painstaking the assembly process was. I actually had to cut this down from the original size I was planning on making it. Even at this size, the pack weighs just shy of one kilogram at 978 grams. By piece count, it's 10 pieces wide, five pieces deep, and 15 pieces high. The peg coupler system isn't the most robust way to connect things together, so the pack isn't super durable. With enough force, the connector pegs will pop out, so I have to do occasional checks to make sure they're all in place, and I don't bust a hole in it. Thankfully, after my test hike, it doesn't seem like it happens too frequently, and the pack is only half of the equation. We've got our storage compartment, but I need to mount it to my back, so I designed and 3D printed a pack frame for it to sit on. Both it and the pack itself are printed in run-of-the-mill ABS. The pack frame has a shelf with raised edges that lets the pack sit in it like a cup, which then gets secured to the frame with cordage along the bottom and vertically up the pack frame. There's also some diagonal support lines to relieve stress off of the 90 degree joints where the shelf meets the back section. And this frame takes unnecessary stress off the pack itself and gives me something to attach straps to. In this case, just some simple paracord pulled around the top and bottom frame and tied off around my stomach. In the future, I'll replace this strap system with something more fancy like woven paracord. And although the end result isn't something I'd exactly call ultra light, what you're left with is a decent functional 10 liter pack that can be used for a solo overnighter or day use. And it'll certainly be a conversation piece. I didn't have time for this video, but in the future I would like to take this pack to do a simple skate packing overnighter. I think that would be fun and a good way to stress test the pack even more. For now, I did an 8 kilometer hike around my usual cardio loop. I loaded my pack up with 3 liters of water and some clothes for weight and set off. So I'm about 2 kilometers into the hike. So far the pack's actually holding up pretty well. I figured that the uh, simple paracord kind of straps would be digging into me and causing me pain, but so far, no. So far, my biggest worry is making sure that the pack sits flush with my back, because I don't want the top kind of tilting out away from my bag and pulling against the simple twine that's holding it against the frame. <laughs> kilometer hike over and done with you know that didn't go nearly as catastrophic as I thought that would thought for sure this thing was gonna fall apart on me you know made it through all eight kilometers of hiking now even the twine that was holding it together which I fully expected to fall apart actually held up pretty well so yeah none of the pins are coming out all the twine still in place no warping of the frame. I don't feel any tension on the uh, tensioner straps that I put on here. So yeah, it uh, held up pretty well despite having nearly 10 pounds in there. Well, I'd be lying if I said that the uh, paracord straps weren't starting to hurt me by the end of it there. When I first thought up this project, I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was really, really silly. But uh, once this thing was fully assembled and started doing some tests with it, uh, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. It actually is not such a dumb idea after all. Yeah, that's all I got for you today. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. This is one of many interesting outdoors oriented 3D print projects that I've got. So make sure you check on this card to see all the interesting stuff that I've made. I'll see you later.